basically we brought some of the prize winning uh, year groups for the competition and we basically asked them to talk about their ideas, their winning entries, but we found it like a, a sort of educational process for them to explain the sort of design work and the approach that we now have to do to make their playground come to life and become an actual project on the ground. So why did you put it in that location? Um, it was a shady, shady, shady but you can't go on Right. So it's in both the shade and the sun. Yeah. And then that's very good thing. So actually that's a good point. Maybe the cafe. It could be. It could be. Yeah. It could be. They've got their ideas, but they've been working out what scale it needs to fit on the site and where it goes. So I think that was a really good exercise for them to really, their imagination to actually start to take form on, on the ground. In the meantime, we still have 30 metre high castles and, um, and, and the likes, which, are, which will be a, a challenge to, to interpret and implement. But yeah, we certainly take advantage of uh, the degree of naivety, if you like. No idea is a bad idea. Uh, and yeah, often very good places to start. Just an uneven, but yeah, like with trees along the outside. And there'll be little entrances there. Yeah. It could be like a big tree with a slide coming down and a platform on top they can look out. And they're very intuitive in terms of best locations for spaces, shade and sun, noise and quiet, and those sort of things, what activities can start to take shape because it's, it's quite a diverse and a very large site. My idea was the tree lookout, which is would be around this area. It's like basically a giant tree that's hollowed out in the middle and you could climb up it and then there'd be a lookout tower at the top with nucleus and stuff like that. And then there'd be a tro um, there's a circular slide that you could come down. And it has like a big like aluminium slide that goes down but we've put it in the shade so it doesn't get really hot. Well, it, it actually, you get, sometimes you get surprised by the very practical ideas, like a little earthquake um, shelter. Um, they're very considerate about safety and other users. But uh, uh, there was a fantastic idea about a communal picnic area, picking up on the idea of Elsie Lock and the sense of community, and just how they can use uh, fantasy figures or imag imaginative figures and then create them into different exciting play forms and they'd, they'd really work that out actually. And then we've got the witch hat slide which was based on the witch in the cherry tree and it's a massive big witch hat complete with a pink bow. The swings are broomsticks because in the story the witch has a broomstick and she flies away on it once she has her muffin. The sense of magic and imagination that she brought to life in those stories, and they've really grasped hold of that as the opportunity to create this fantastic play experience. So I think that's what's driving our design as well, is to create this fantastic setting to let the children's imagination really run riot and have such a diverse, a diverse arrangement of different play elements and stories that they can come to enjoy. There is literally a, a blank sheet of paper and yeah, the criteria are actually relatively generous and probably a once in a lifetime opportunity for, for the children and the community to actually deliver a project which is um, significant in, in international terms. I think we learnt that actually it's a way bigger space than we thought it was. <laughs>